Hey guys, this is Martin. Welcome back to our Burp mini series around tips and tricks. And today I want to show you a couple of things around the search functionality in Burp. So if you head over to Burp, right uh, in the top menu bar here, you see the Burp um, over here. And then you have something called search. So if you click search, you basically can search everything Burp has captured, right? And which is extremely useful. And you can also limit the responses, for example, that you can say like only in scope, right? Which I highly recommend because otherwise you get a lot of garbage basically from, from other websites you may have browsed to and you, you're not interested in testing. And so basically what I recommend here is also like you can, for example, only, only look for your search query in the requests or just in the responses that that, that depends and then the tools um, I usually select all of them and you can also do a negative search like you want to for example have um, something which does not contain this specific keyword or string or something right but let's keep it simple for now and just search for CSRF for example hit enter and then you see all the um, entries where CSRF was mentioned. And then if you come here, you see instantly, like down here, you see matches, right? Like, so you have four matches, CSRF matches, and then you just click on that. And then, yeah, well, it's in the title, first and foremost, not really interesting. Uh, in H2 tag, also not interesting. But here it's in the link, um, probably also not that interesting. But the last one is basically the, an actual CSRF token, right? And so you can browse through all this and then you, you see always like how many matches you had. And it, it's super easy. I find it super useful if I, if I look for a certain string, if I encounter like an API key or something like this, and then I want to see where else is this used, right? Or I, I find a URL or something, an Ajax call or whatever, and then I put it in there and then I, I see, I, it helps me to understand the application a lot better um, and how it's interacting with each other. So that's the first feature I wanted to show you. And the second one is if you go to your target tab and then if you right click this here and go to engagement tools, you also have like a find comments option, which I also find extremely useful because it's going through and it's looking for developer comments. And very often developers put too much or too many comments in, um, which could give hints to attackers or penetration testers, bug bounty hunters, right? And some of them may be, you know, uh, not that interesting like this one here. Um, yeah, well, Adobe Illustrator, not really interesting, right? But um, here it's just a couple of numbers, but, but, but then you basically also get text, right? And uh, so this is dependent on the website you're browsing on, but sometimes you find comments and it says like, hey, um, this, is a, this is our new feature and it's not live yet, it's in better stage. Or you find comments where, hey, I removed this, this code here and they commented out, but the, but the code is actually may still be live or something like this. And they give you hints and they, they're meant to do this during the development process and then they should strip it off before it goes into production, but sometimes it's left over. So it's quite helpful as well. So the other thing I want to show you is once again, if you go here to engagement tools is find scripts. So super useful if you want to find scripts like JavaScript files, for example, right? And then you come here and then it shows you the JavaScript files basically. And this is, this is very often useful and then you can search in here as well, right? Like you can search in this specific JavaScript file. I mean, you have other ways of, of automating this, but I find it useful because in JavaScript files, there's usually a lot of logic, how the page interacts and does things and may do Ajax calls and calls other things on the back end. And um, you, can, you can use that functionality as well to um, browse through JavaScript real quick and then you can also search here. This is, and then also the re request and response, right? Like, so this is the request to that JavaScript file and then the response when you got back, which is basically what you see here, right? So this is then the, the pure JavaScript. Um, very useful in my opinion. Um, and the last one I wanna show you here is basically the find references, right? So you can also do find references. And this is, for example, um, when the, the location like here in this example here right like a reference where a reference of your main page is being made somewhere else 
right? So this is often useful um, because you know companies have subdomains and there are, there are different applications and microservices and things like that. And that can be extremely useful as well, in my opinion. So there's a lot of functionality Burp has built in, right? So uh, once again, coming over here, um, similar manual testing, you don't really need this, right? Like this is, <laughs> um, this is just, simulating to the application that you would do a normal penetration test or something like this. Um, uh, what else? Analyze target I use quite a lot, um, which you need to have the permission for that website, but it's basically like a spider and then it's it's analyzing all the, um, uh, you know, all the folder structure and the file structure and things like that. So this is, this is super useful. Um, I hope this makes sense and I hope you learned a couple of new tricks within Burp and how you can use them. And I see you in the next video.